Hello and welcome to this week's Real Estate Report on the Finance News Network. I'm Melissa Beaumont-Lee. This week we continue our series looking at suburbs with the highest median prices in 2010, with a focus on two suburbs in Victoria. We speak with Jim McCurley, chairman of On The House, about the property website giving competitors a run for their money. And in our tax tip, we look at instant write-offs and low-value pools. But first, let's catch up on the latest property news with Lelda Smiths. Total residential building approvals rose by 9.1% in the month of March, following two months of falls. The Housing Industry Association reports that the numbers were driven by a significant rise in approvals in the private sector other dwelling segment, up 26.1% in March. HIA has welcomed the rise and says it's good to see some positive news from the apartment sector. The March results were underpinned by a 26.6% increase in Victorian approvals, followed by New South Wales, up by 8 and a half percent and Western Australia up by 3.4 percent. We continue our series looking at suburbs with the highest median prices in 2010 with a focus on two suburbs in Victoria. First let's look at Toorak, a suburb located eight kilometres southeast of Melbourne's central business district, located on the left bank of the Yarra River. With a population of 13,127 in the last census, Turak has become synonymous with wealth and privilege in popular Australian culture. The suburb has long had the reputation of being Melbourne's most elite. The main street, Turak Road, is the commercial area of Turak Village, a strip of shops and cafes. Many of the large 19th century mansions survived in neighbouring suburbs, but not so in Turak, because of the higher land values. Today, the suburb has a mix of high, low and medium density due to intense subdivision. 48% of housing is apartments, single-family detached homes make up 35% of housing stock, and attached housing, such as terraces, comprise 16%. Turning to the figures, houses in Turak recorded the capital's highest median price of 2010 of $2,650,000. 150 properties were sold in the year. Our next suburb is Kuyong, the suburb next to Turak located 10 kilometres southeast of Melbourne CBD. With a population of 781 in the last census, the suburb is bordered by the Monash Freeway, Glenferry Road and Turak Road. Kuyong has many stately three, four and five bedroom homes along leafy tree-lined streets. Property finishes are of an exceptionally high standard, as would be expected in this price range. Property in the suburb is very tightly held. Kuyong Stadium at the Kuyong Lawn Tennis Club was at one point the venue for the Australian Open. Kuyong Park is located opposite the tennis centre. The suburb is serviced by Kuyong Railway Station and Tram Route 16. Turning to the figures, houses in Kuyong recorded the capital's second highest median price in 2010 of $2,233,000. 14 properties were sold in the year. Let's now turn to our interview. This week we speak with Jim McCurley, Chairman of On The House, about the property website giving competitors a run for their money. Well, it's more than a website, it's a company. Um, and the, the, the service of the company comprises a consumer portal, a website, that provides all sorts of uh, content and information about real estate, residential real estate. Um, it's a database of uh, almost all of the residential property in Australia and carries sales history, uh, loads of other information, so people can go to it and get information about what is, in fact, the biggest asset that most people have. It's the way that the world is going in terms of information management and moving into online, uh, in the online space. Um, it's not modelled on, I think there are some overseas sites that are uh, um, moved in the same direction, um, Zillow, for example. Um, um, but it's really the next generation of what's been done uh, overseas. There's nothing like it in Australia. You can look up the stock market and get the price of your shares um, at a uh, heartbeat, but you can't work out what the value of your property is. And for most people, that's, that's a very big proportion of their uh, wealth portfolio. And now to the tax tip of the week from Depreciator, the tax depreciation schedule specialists. This week, we take a look at instant write-offs and low value pools. If you've purchased an asset for your rental property this tax year and it's worth less than $300, you can claim the entire cost in your tax return. 
For assets costing more than $300 but less than $1,000, low value pool rules can apply. This allows items to be depreciated more quickly. So if, for example, you need to replace the boiler or the stove for your rental property, look for items under $1,000 including installation and have it done before the end of the financial year to recoup the best deductions. As always, do remember to consult with a tax accountant or tax professional before making any tax related decisions. And that's the Real Estate Report for Monday the 16th of May. Thanks for joining us. I'm Melissa Beaumont-Lee for the Finance News Network.